Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala ali wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habita fillah uh, very important for us to talk about in general iman the concept of iman and so I thought it would be relevant for us to mention some ahadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as collected in Sahih al-Bukhari and first it's very appropriate for us to look at the hadith of Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, in which he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, Ya Muhammad, akhbirani al-Islam. He said, O Muhammad, tell me about Islam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned then the five pillars of uh, Islam. And then he said, akhbirani al iman. He said, tell me about iman. Tell me about faith. So that way we know about faith in Islam. <clears throat> and then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and tu'minu billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rasulihi wal yawm al akhir wa tu'minu bi qadri khayrihi wa shar so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam answered by saying uh, that iman it is to believe in allah and his angels and his books and his messengers and to believe in the day of judgment and to believe in the divine destiny, the good and the evil of it. That is what is known as the Arkan al-Iman. The pillars of Iman. The six <clears throat> pillars of Iman. Which we know. Inshallah ta'ala. And this is Iman as far as is explicitly mentioned in that hadith in the hadith of Jibreel. And what is known as the Arkan al-Iman. The pillars of Iman. But Iman also has a more comprehensive uh, meaning according to the Shar as well. According to many texts in the Book of Allah, in the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, there are many things that the Prophet described as Iman, that also described as Iman, as faith. So Iman is not just restricted to those pillars, but that's the foundation of Iman. Those are the pillars of Iman. But Iman also has a, a greater meaning. And there's a beautiful principle that the scholars mention often when talking about Iman <clears throat> and Islam. And they say that either ashtaraka iftaraka. Either if well, either iftaraka, uh, then they are by themselves. So which means that when you have a text, for example, in the Quran or uh, in the Sunnah, where Iman and Islam are mentioned, then if they are mentioned together, then their meanings are different. Okay, if they're mentioned together, then their meanings are, are separate. They have an, a specific meaning. Islam is referring to something and Iman is... Something different. But if they are mentioned by themselves, then they are, their meaning is, uh, their meaning is, so if, if they are mentioned together, their meaning is se uh, separate. You know, they have distinct meaning. If they are mentioned by themselves in the meanings they are encompassing of one another. That uh, when you read a text and the, the Prophet ﷺ mentions Iman, it's, it's referring in a general way also to Islam in general. So sometimes the meanings are uh, sim the same and sometimes the meanings are actually separate. Okay, And we'll get a better understanding of that when we look at some of these ahadith. And so also, as a very important concept regarding Iman, regarding faith in Islam, is we know that Iman fluctuates. We all know that from personal experience, and we know that also from the Nasus. That Iman is sometimes strong, and sometimes Iman is weak. And sometimes Iman increases, and sometimes it decreases. And as Ahlul Sunnah says, that Iman, Yazdad bi ta'atillah, that Iman, faith, it 
increases when you're obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you're doing good deeds. Your iman is actually increasing. You're exhibiting strong iman and you're increasing your iman. Good deeds help your iman to grow. When you do sin, that is a sign of your weak iman and it makes your iman decrease. So if someone is always doing sin, they're going to, their iman's always going to be going down until, as Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, he mentions about iman, he said, uh, or he mentions about sins, he said, al ma'asi barid al kufr. He said that uh, sinfulness is the means to disbelief. It is the means to disbelief. Doing sin is not disbelief. It's not kofar. If someone lies, someone cheats, someone steals, someone drinks wine, whatever. That's not disbelief. But it's a means. It's a wasila going that sinfulness is a way that leads to disbelief. So this is why uh, sins are so, so dangerous. From those hadith that Imam Bukhari mentioned in his chapter about uh, Iman, is the hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala in which he said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, he said, faith consists of more than 60 subdivisions or branches. And Al-Haya, Al-Haya is uh, a part of faith. So in the hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-Iman bid'u wa sab'un shu'ba wal haya shu'batun min al-Iman. So he said that faith is 70 branches. Faith is 70 branches. That means there's so many different types uh, of things that denote faith in Islam. And he said, uh, Al-Haya, you know, shyness uh, is from Iman. So having shyness, as we know in Islam, is a praiseworthy trait. It's a good trait. To not always be um, out there, whether man, male or female, to have some shyness, to feel some shyness, and shyness from sin, shyness from sinning, and shyness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this is a good trait. That is a good trait. Shyness as a means of not giving the haq, not sharing the truth, is not praiseworthy. That's not praiseworthy to be too shy to share the truth with someone, okay? Mm -hmm. Unless it's a situation where there's hikmah in, there's always should be hikmah or wisdom in how you address something. If you see someone who's very sinful or, or whatever, you want to give them advice, you need to have wisdom in how you address them. But shyness to be, you know, I'm shy to tell him that that is haram or whatever, and, and it's a perfectly acceptable <coughs> time to do so, then that is not something praiseworthy. So it's very important to understand shyness and when it is something good, okay, and when it is something which is unpraiseworthy. So the Messenger Wasallam said, Al-Haya min al-Iman. So shyness, this is from Iman. So when someone exhibits shyness, especially for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they're avoiding sin. Shyness is what kept them from doing such and such or looking at such and such or listening to such and such or whatever. Then this is something good. And this is something that will be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they are exhibiting iman. They're showing faith. Okay? They're showing iman. Uh, in the next hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is a hadith, of Abdullah bin Amr radiallahu ta'ala anhuma the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said a Muslim is the one who avoids harming Muslims with his tongue and his hands <clears throat> and a muhajir the one who makes hijrah is the one who gives up what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden this is also in Bukhari this hadith shows us also that hijrah 
and, uh, you know, not harming one another, not speaking bad to one another, is a part of Iman. This is from Iman. All those good deeds. So that shows Iman is broader than what we said, just the pillars of Iman. Yes, that's those are the pillars of Iman. But Iman also is, has a more comprehensive meaning also in Islam. So it just depends on the usage of it. But all of these things are from Iman. Meaning if you make hijra for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, aside from this hijra, the, the scholars, they mention there are two types of hijra. There's hijra in, in a general sense. There is the hijra, which is a physical hijra. For example, leaving a, a disbelieving country to go live in a Muslim country. Leaving in a country that has a lot of bid'ah to a country that has a lot of sunnah. Leaving a country that has that could be a disbelieving country, but has a lot of sin to a place that has less sin. All of those are types of hijra. Those are all ways of immigrating. Okay? And the type of hijra that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in this hadith, which also shows that this is from Iman, he ﷺ said, and a muhajir is the one who gives up all what Allah has forbidden. The muhajir is the one who gives up all that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given. As forbidden. So that shows that Iman or this Hijrah is from Iman and that's a part of Taqwa. That's a part of Taqwa Allah Azza wa Jal. Why? Because Taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <clears throat> Taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the scholars mention this is adhering to the commands of Allah and avoiding his prohibitions. This is Taqwa. Taqwa is Adhering to the commands of Allah, meaning you're doing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and you're avoiding his prohib prohibitions. That is, taq that is taqwa. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayu an-nasa taqullah, haqqa taqatihi wa la tumutunna illa wa antum muslimun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayu an-nas, fear Allah. Ya ayu al-adhina aminu wa taqullah haqqa taqatihi wa la, wa la tumutunna illa went to muslimun so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing the the believers ya yuladina amanu ittaqullah haqqa taqatihi o you who believe fear allah the, the with full fear haqqa taqatihi you know this is the giving him his right in taqwa so what does that mean does that mean you're like this no this fear of Allah means you are doing his commandments and you're avoiding his prohibitions. That is what real taqwa is. That you are putting a barrier between you and Jahannam or you and sinfulness. That's taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's a part of Iman. So this hijra that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because a lot of people understand hijra only as the physical migration, which is ajr alim if you do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But likewise... If you, because some people, you can still, even if you go to a Muslim land, we know you can still be doing the major sins. All the same sins. People, I've known people who've made that move and have left Islam even. I can think of two people right off the get-go who came to Saudi Arabia and, and became disbelievers. And there's so many. I mean, there's enough that have done this. So it isn't just the land or those signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those things are there to help you. And if you do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is immense reward. But a major part of hijrah is leaving off the sin to come to that which is good, to come to obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is hijrah and that is iman. That is from iman. So in the beginning of the hadith, the Prophet sallallahu said, a Muslim is the one who avoids harming Muslims with his tongue and hands. Imam Bukhari put this in... Uh, uh, mention this hadith in this bab to show you that Iman is also on the tongue and with the hands. And that's a refutation of those groups, especially a particular sect in history called the Murjia. And now people have this ideology, they're affected a lot by the Aqidah of the Murjia. So I'm going to tell you about it because it's very important. You'll see, you'll meet many people, especially here in the West, but you'll meet them everywhere. 
<clears throat> that they have this, uh, this, uh, they are affected by this Akita, this belief. This belief is that they believe that your, that Iman in Islam is only in the heart or that Iman is on the heart and the tongues. You know, if you take the Shahada, which is your tongue, and if you believe in your heart, that is Iman. That's enough. And they believe that actions, deeds, are not a part of Iman. And then they have many variations. But in general, that gives you an idea. Uh, and so they were, they appeared after the Khawarij as a response to the extremism of the Khawarij, who said that Iman is either 100% complete or non-existent. So if you did a sin, a major sin, you were a disbeliever. That's what the Khawarij <laughs> believed, the Tekfiris. Okay? But, and the Murgia were a response to them and their belief. So they also believe that Iman is either 100% or non-existent. Because you're either a full mu'min or you're not even a Muslim. They believe that. But for them, unlike the Khawarij, they believe sins don't really affect your Iman. So... That because it's it's an action, the sins of uh, the the your physical sins. Okay, so for example, you can pray or you cannot pray. You can wear jeans as a woman, and a scarf or makeup, or wear full hijab. It doesn't matter. You're all from iman as long as it's iman is in your heart. That's why you hear so many people say today say like if you see a sister and you try to advise her, she'll say iman's. You, brother, you don't know. He man's in my heart. You don't know he, he's drinking beer. He, you don't know I'm. I, you know I. I believe I love Allah and His Messenger. So I said he may have love for Allah and His Messenger, but he's not showing it. Mm. And he may. Yeah, he has iman, but he actually may believe he doesn't know that those physical actions are a part of his iman. And so there's gradation. Some people accept some of it. Some people are full-blown like Murjia, where they don't believe uh, that your actions are from Iman. And so that's why you see a lot. In fact, a lot of Muslims, in the West especially, but all around the world, because I met many in Saudi as well, but they're affected by that Aqidah. And that's why you'll see so many people, they're, it's no problem for them. They go to the club and this and this and this. And they don't think they're really doing wrong. Or they'll say that, you know, they feel that they're doing some wrong. You know, it's a bad environment, but they feel like, you know, my iman's in the heart. You don't know. I'm still like a full believer. Some people believe that. And some people, like I said, are so extreme. They don't believe uh, physical actions are even a part of iman. But ahl sunnati wal jama'ah, according to the Quran and according to the sunnah, Believe that Iman is qawli san, speaking on the tongue like the shahada, or saying a good word to someone. Wa ittiqad fi qalb, or bil qalb, it's also belief in the heart. Wa al amal bil qalb, and also deeds or actions of the heart. Wa amal bil juwarih. Okay, and deeds of the limbs. So that means it, 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 all these things are a part of your iman. Speaking what you say, this is a part of iman. Taking the shahada is a physical thing. Reciting your dua and prayers and adhkar, this is on the tongue. What you believe in your heart, of course, that is the asl of iman. And also the uh, actions that you do. Performing prayer, giving physical zakat, sadaqah, jihad. Hajj, all those physical actions are all a part of Iman. <coughs> making the physical hijra or making the spiritual hijra. So all of that is a part of Iman. So that's the difference between Ahl Sunnah and, uh, and the Murji and these groups. So Imam Bukhari put this here also as a refutation of the Murjiya, of these people who have this belief. that Because that's why the Messenger وسلم, said a Muslim is the one who avoids harming Muslims with his tongue, meaning speaking, that's on the tongue, and his hands. So by refraining 
with your hands, this is also a part of Iman. It's a part of Islam, makes you a Muslim, and it is from Iman. So here, uh, being a Muslim, obviously, means you have Iman. So it's showing that Iman and Islam, here, the meaning is similar, a similar meaning, okay? <clears throat> and the next hadith, in the next hadith, uh, narrated Abu Musa radiallahu ta'ala anhu, some people asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, whose Islam is the best? Whose Islam is the best? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, <coughs> one who avoids harming the Muslims with his tongue and hands. So in this hadith also in Bukhari, we see that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, just like the last hadith, uh, is mentioning uh, by avoiding harming people, harming Muslims, with your tongue and your hands, that this is a part of Iman. Likewise, anyone, you know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, La darar wa la dirar. Do, do not harm nor reciprocate harm. All that's, that's from Iman. You know, you shouldn't harm people. That's that's also we're, we're Muslim. We should be setting a good example, whether they're Muslim or non-Muslim, that you should not harm people. In the next hadith, which is the last hadith, which is also in the chapter of Iman, uh, narrated Abdullah bin Amr radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, a man asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whose Islam is good? Or what deed uh, in Islam, what deeds in Islam are good? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam replied to feed others and to greet those who you know and those who you don't know. In this hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it shows us that a part of Islam, and as we mentioned in, in the beginning, that when Islam is mentioned by itself, it includes Iman and, and vice versa. But if they are mentioned together, their meaning then is specific. They're different. Either Shtaraka if uh, in Farada or ish, like this, they they their meanings are different. <clears throat> so in this hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu said to feed others and to greet those you know and those who you don't know. So that lets us know that a part of Iman is giving salams to people. And even those who you don't know, because look how many people we see some people who are neighbors now, non-Muslims, that don't greet, some who don't greet, okay? That they go by and they walk their dog and they don't even look at you in order to avoid greeting. That's the opposite of Islam. So we should always try to be better and set a better example and try to give salams to people. Likewise, we go to the masjid, sometimes we get in a habit or you see other Muslims or sisters. I mean, you see a lot of times Muslims here and they won't even give you salams. You know, they won't even acknowledge you or they, they know you're Muslim, but they're just in their own world. Everybody's just like on their own thing. They don't give salams, you know, and you feel better when you're in an environment, when you see the people who are good, you know, and they're giving, uh, <clears throat> they're giving salams. But that is a part of Iman, giving the salams. Giving the salams is a, the greeting of the Muslim. It's a part of Iman and it will only increase your Iman and it softens the hearts. Also, the Prophet Sallallahu said in that same hadith, he said to feed others. So also feeding the fuqara and the musakim. So this is very important if we have something to give to the poor and to be grateful to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for what we have as we are meeting so many people who don't have from Muslims and non-Muslims. Muslims living in their cars, sleeping in their car, Muslims struggling, working and living in their cars. Okay. <clears throat> so it's a ni'mah min ni'am Allah to have that. And it's from Iman to share with your brothers and sisters in Islam. So all of that is from Iman. And Iman Bukhari, he put these ahadith in this chapter for that reason, to show you that Iman is, uh, you know, that there are many ways of exhibiting your Iman and practicing your Iman. And that Iman is also, uh, it's on the limbs, it's on the tongue, and it's, uh, in the heart. All of that's a part of Iman. And the last hadith, which is not here, which is in a hadith in Sahih Muslim, 
عن أبي سعيد الخضري رضي الله تعالى عنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول so Abi Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu ta'ala an, he said that I heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, مَنْ رَعَى مِنْكُمْ مُنْكَرٍ فَلِيُغَيْرُهُ بِيَدْ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَبِلِسَانِهِ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَبِقَلْبِهِ وَذَارِكَ عَرَفُ الْإِمَانِ رُوَاهُ مُسْلِمْ So in this hadith in Sahih Muslim, the hadith of Abi Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu ta'ala an, which also illustrates that iman is all of those components what we, we mentioned, he said, I heard the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying, uh, whoever sees a munkar from amongst you, then change it with his hands. And if he is unable to do so, then change it with his tongue, meaning speak out against it. And if he's unable to do so, then hate it in his heart. And that is the weakest form of faith. We know this is from faith because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam described it as faith. He said that uh, hating it in your heart is the weakest form of faith. Letting us know that all those things are from faith. Changing it with your hand. So, Amr bi maruf and nayin al munkar is from iman. It's from iman. And if you can do it physically over, meaning over those you have authority over, so the mother can do this to her children, the father over his household, you know, he sees somebody doing something wrong. He has this ability. You obviously, if you see your mother doing something wrong, you cannot, you don't have that ability. But then you could go to the next level and you could advise her. Ya Ummi. You know, you shouldn't look at that. You shouldn't listen to that or this. Or, you know, I thought it was like this in a respectful way. Because the command in the good and the forbidden and the evil is according, it has, it has maratib, it has levels. And it's according to your qudra, according to your ability. Okay, so obviously the youngest from amongst us, we all can command the good in physical uh, in a physical way. You know, don't touch that. Don't play with that. You know, don't do this. Be careful, you know, and that might be a physical and it might be a speaking. Okay, but if you see something else you have no control over or it's going to be a greater harm by you uh, commanding the good and forbidding the evil. You will just dislike that munkar, that sin, in the heart. <coughs> For example, akramakum Allah. Now in this society, we see many people, we see, um, you know, homosexuality that's open and pushed. It's in the agenda. It's there. So obviously, we don't condone that behavior. We don't like when we see sin to men walking hand in hand, akramakum Allah, or kissing, or whatever the case may be. That's not permissible in Islam. Muharra, it's haram. And it's detestable in Islam. But you don't have any ability. You can't say, hey, you guys break it up or let me push you guys apart. Or No, but you dislike that behavior in your heart. Okay, you see sins. Someone is smoking drugs or doing this or doing this. You can't change that physically, but you can dislike that in your heart. You don't want to be around that. Okay. And guess what? That's a part of Iman. The fact that you disliked it in your heart is from Iman. But if you accept it in your heart, you don't do anything about it, and you are comfortable. You're like, eh, sorry, he's smoking weed. It's kind of cool. I don't smoke weed, but he smokes. It's okay. Oh, he's drinking wine. You know, I'm not really that bothered by it. Then that then you gain a sin with him. Because you didn't commit. Yes, you didn't. Because you're witnessing. You're witnessing and involved in a gathering for example some people actually that are muslim don't do some of those things but they like to be in those gatherings of munka <coughs> some muslims they go to the club and they don't dance they don't drink smoke but they just like to hang out their friends are there and they sit there you know they sit or whatever maybe they dance but maybe they don't do other things they have their limits okay everybody has different limits uh, you know, or, you know, there's many different scenarios like that. They go to parties, they do this and do this, and they don't get into those, but they're still in the environment of sin. If the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes, they're getting it too. They're not going to be safe. You know, oh, my friends are homosexual, but I'm not homosexual. Okay. And you're a Muslim. That just, it doesn't go together. 
You're involved in the munkar. You're surrounded and engaged in the munkar, and you're not trying to change it. You're not even disliking it in your heart. You're comfortable and happy with that. So this is why the Prophet Sallallahu said, فَإِنَّ مِسْتَطِعِ And if and if you're unable to do so, meaning you're unable to speak out against it, then you at least dislike that bad behavior in your heart, and that's the weakest form of faith. So it's a part of Iman. And so that's just a little bit about Iman and the importance of knowing about Iman and some of those ahadith in Bukhari. We ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and increase our Iman. Bless us with a class with a bat. وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم